So I'm Brian. I work here at the uh, San Francisco Main Library as part of the Bridge, our literacy and learning department. And Michael. Hello. Uh, also a longtime library employee and also here at the Bridge at Main. So uh, this class, I'll bring up a slide in a second, but we did this class because we previously did a class using Mac photos. And so many things came up that uh, I went and did some more research and hopefully there's some uh, new information to share. And a few things that uh, this is just going to be relaxed and conversational. We're going to show some basic tips on using uh, photos. We're going to do this in real time. So I think it's a, then an honest experience and some things will go right, some things will go wrong, but you'll, you'll see it in real time. It's not um, from slides. And if you're interested in such things, I'm using one of the newest uh, MacBook Pros um, and it's running the latest operating system, um, uh, OS 12.1. Um, so sometimes features, if you're using an older computer, may not be exactly the same. At the very end of the presentation, I'll show some slides of additional resources, including uh, LinkedIn Learning, which is free from the library, and which I did use for some of the research for this. So once again, I'm going to do this in real time, um, and I'll try to also slow down a bit. Uh, so as I said, uh, Photos is a free application and app that comes with your Macintosh computer. Um, and I'll show you where you would find applications on your computer. Um, so I have the dock hidden uh, down here so I can have more um, desktop space. And then when I bring the mouse down to it, it pops up. And uh, in case you're interested, I'll just show you how to do that. I'm going to go to system preferences. So you went to the Apple. Can everybody see my like the, the, the cursor there? And system preferences. And then let me see where doc is. Doc, here we go. Sorry, doc and menu bar. And um, I wonder if I can move this out of the way a bit. Can't. Okay. Um, doc and menu bar and automatically hide and show the doc. So if I uncheck that, the doc is always there, which is less confusing and handy. It's always there for you. Um, but I do that so that I have more um, usable screen space. And then if you want to bring it back up, you just bring the cursor down and let it rest for a second. Uh, and now I'm going to hopefully click that. Okay. So now I am going to go to, uh, oh, and then I was gonna show you where applications live. So down here, is the finder. I'm going to click on it once. It brings up a bunch of things, but I'm going to click on applications, which I actually had moved to the top of the sidebar right over there, um, right over here. And then it has all the applications and also um, some of the utilities that are included in the uh, opera, um, on your Mac computer. So in this case, photos is right over here, um, but it's already in my dock. If you need to move something into the dock, all you would do is grab it. So here, I'm gonna grab photos and start bringing it down. And when I bring it to the dock, then I could find a spot where I'd like to place it in between two other icons and drop it and then it'll live there. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it now. One of the things with photos is you can have multiple libraries, um, collections of photos, they call them libraries. So while I have uh, the cursor on the icon, I'm gonna hold down the option key, which is on the bottom left of the keyboard. And when I click, I'm gonna get this menu, which gives me some choices. So there's already the um, kind of a, a standard library, which was automatically created, but you can create additional ones so that you can basically uh, move them around or, or uh, keep things organized. You might want to have one for work, one for home, uh, family, uh, or um, whatever. So in this case, I'm going to create a brand new one. So I'm going to go down to create new. And I'm going to call it, oh, snap to, uh, and I'm going to go V2 for version two. So I created one earlier. And it's automatically going to save it in the pictures folder. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have a brand new um, a library. So now we have a brand new fresh library with uh, no information in it. So I'm going to show a few ways of bringing images in for the first time. So I'm going to, I'm also going to make this window a little smaller so I can control it. <clears throat> now notice it says 
connect a camera or memory card, um, drag pictures directly in, into it. Um, you can import using the file menu, and you can also use iCloud. We're not going to use iCloud today, but I'll show the other three ways of bringing in photos. So here is a camera. In this case, it's a really nice Fuji uh, camera, and it uses a memory card to store photos. So if I open this latch, normally there would be a memory card in there. I've already taken it out. I guess I'll put it back in to show you um, the experience. So here it is, I'm gonna open it. And very often with the cameras, you'll click and that'll um, semi-eject the cards so that you can grab it. So I usually find that's the easiest way to get photos from a camera into the computer. And then if, depending on what computer you have, some of them have a slot built into it already where you can insert the card and then bring the photos in. I'll show you an older MacBook uh, over here. Um, and this one has the slot right there on the side where you can insert uh, right there, where you can insert a memory card. There are also external devices such as this, which will read various memory cards uh, right there. And I don't know if I can show you this. I have one, uh, a dongle attached to this computer, which lets me plug in the keyboard I have, as well as um, memory cards. Another thing about memory cards. Uh, um, so this is a standard um, SD uh, card, uh, kind of a nice fast one. Notice it's all one piece. Um, these days there's a lot of, I guess, are they micro SD cards? I believe they're called. They're super small. So here, I'm gonna bring it up to the camera as best I can. And then uh, you either have to put them in a slot in an adapter or you use this adapter, which is that standard size. And then you can bring it into the computer either through, once again, through a slot in the computer or through some adapter. Um, I am going to place this card into an adapter right now. And I'm going to minimize this again. And we'll see that it's looking to bring in all these photos. I'm gonna close it. I'm just doing that so you can see how that works. And see on the desktop of the computer, it shows that this um, drive has been attached. I'm gonna right click and eject it. But that's one way to um, make these visible onto your computer. Um, I've already brought a few photos in and um, put them on the desktop. And I will now go back to photos and I'm gonna bring a few photos in. Okay, so once again, showed how you could connect a memory card. You can also with some cameras um, attach a cable and bring it in directly from the, the uh, camera. I am going to bring in a sunrise from August 2020, and I'm just going to drag it in there, and it showed right up. I'm also going to bring in this folder, which says Christmas Tree Civic Center. I'm going to open the folder in this case. I double clicked, and I can see the photo. The same thing, I'm going to drag it and release it onto the actual program, onto, and it's now in the library of the of Photos app. Now I am going to go to file and import. And now I'm going to click on the desktop where all these folders are. And I'm going to go for, oh, I don't know, this time it's going to be the fireboat. I double clicked and then it brought in a photo of the fireboat. If I go back to my library, I can, I should be able to see. Ah, in this case, um, it's given me a choice to think about it. Like I might have opened up a folder with a 10, 20 uh, photos. I may not want them all, but I do want this. And, I, and if I had multiple photos, then this import selected would actually be um, highlighted. It would be active and I could select different photos and bring them in. So right now I'm gonna click on import new photo. And so now that is in the library. Now I'm gonna show you something else which can come um, very much in handy. I'm going to uh, show another way to bring um, photos and other items into your computer. And here is my iPhone. And I am going to pick a photo 
I'm going to pick one that I took this morning um, of uh, sunrise in San Francisco. And there is a little icon on the bottom. It's uh, that looks like a square with a, an arrow. I am going to hit that. And that's the universal for the Mac share button. So I did that. And now I'm going to hit the airdrop uh, icon down there. Um, and we're going to see that icon again. And now it's going to look for other Apple devices, which also have AirDrop um, activated. And the name of this computer is Bridges Mac Pro. So it popped up. Photo, share, AirDrop, MacBook Pro. There we go. So, and when you have this, you can actually decline because maybe someone is reaching out to you with whom you don't want to connect. Um, you can decline it or you can click on accept and then you have options. You can save it to the downloads folder or you can open it directly into photos. So in this case, I'm gonna open it up directly in photos and click open in photos. And let's see. And then now we have a new sunrise photo right there that was taken this morning. Those are some ways of bringing photos into photos. Um, now I'm going to minimize this for a second. One of the things I picked up in uh, doing this research, uh, one of the instructors on LinkedIn Learning said that you should really have a, um, as um, minimally distracting a space as possible when you're doing photo editing. But he's pretty serious about stuff. Um, he was talking about having gray walls and things like that. Um, but he mentioned the desktop and that having um, lots of colors on the desktop could skew how you adjust your photos. So I'm gonna show you how to change the desktop background, which is a handy thing to know how to do anyway. So I'm gonna right click on the desktop. And then one of my options is change desktop background. And here we are on desktop. And I'm gonna go down to the one over here where it has colors. And I'm going to pick this kind of darkish gray, like a middle gray, I think. And now I'm just gonna close that. So now instead of having that rather beautiful and colorful background, I have a non-distracting gray background. I often do that with my computer anyway, and maybe just have a fun picture kind of in the center. Okay, and go back to photos. Okay, so we have some photos in here. Um, and I think I'm also gonna drag another thing in. I'm gonna drag pizza in. Okay, so I'm going back to the library. Brian, on your screen, you have a label that says JPEG and RAW. So mm -hmm. That's showing as a label. Can you kind of explain that? And does that kind of mean that there are two copies of this photo in your library, one in each format? Yes, and when we get to editing, we're gonna do a little bit more with that. But a JPEG is the perhaps the most popular common format for images and for and particularly photos. Um, and one of the things that's nice about it, aside from being universal, is that it also is very compact. And it basically gets rid of a lot of information, basically the things that your eye can't see. So that's, you know, so for the most part, we wouldn't notice it. But a raw file um, has a lot more information. It's a much larger file, but it hasn't thrown that information away. It's, it's captured a whole bunch. So when it comes time to editing a photo, um, having a raw file is um, much handier. And when we get into the editing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back and forth between a JPEG and a RAW and see if we can see some differences in that. Okay, so uh, we're in the library. And part of the way also that this program works is there are albums and there are folders. And basically folders are just where you, um, you can store albums. And I'll show that. Well, here, I'm going to create a f an album. I'm going to go over here and notice I hit that little triangle and I have my albums. I'm gonna click and create a new one, or rather I'm gonna click and it's gonna be some options. So the first one I'm gonna do is album. And I'm gonna call it sunrises. And I'm gonna go back to library and I'm gonna drag some, this one in there and this one in there. So now, they both are in there. So it's a way of me keeping track of different things um, by creating an album. If I wanted to create a folder, I'm gonna go up to file and do new folder. 
and I'm just going to click that. Call, I'm going to call it one test. Now, under I'm going to go back to library, and just so you know, if I were to drag this photo into the test folder, it's going. It should have created an album out of that. So folders are designed to help you organize your albums. Um, and so you're going to always have an album within the folder if, uh, if you're working with a folder. Now, another thing about organization, um, this is creating a smart album. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a click over here and I'm now going to create a smart album. And this is something where you can give it criteria and it can, um, sort for you and, uh, be able to, uh, organize. So I'm going to call this one favorite sunsets. So first thing is there's all this search criteria. So I'm going to go photo is a favorite. Now I'm going to click the plus sign over here and I'm going to give it a different criteria. Okay. Um, photo is raw, say, which is that special format. And I'm going to do another one and say camera model is, and it should know the cameras that I, I, I've been using through the metadata that came in there. So I'm going to say, in this case, from the Fuji, which is X100F. So now I'm going to click OK. And now let's see if there's anything in there. So nothing. So now I'm going to go back to Sunrises, to the Sunrises folder, and I'm going to make this one a favorite. So now if I go back to favorite sunsets, it has something in there because it, it hit that criteria. Now, if I go back to favorite sunsets and do edit and change it from camera model is the iPhone and click OK, then that goes away because I don't have one that meets all that criteria. So I'm going to go back to uh, Sunrises and I'm going to make this one a favorite. This one I took with my phone this morning. And now if we go back to favorite sunsets, okay, Sunrises. Oh, and I said sunsets. I meant to say Sunrises, right? Okay. Favorite sunrises, so sunrises. So what did I not do right with this one? So I'm going to go back to favorite sunrises and I'm going to edit and I'm going to check the criteria and see where I went wrong. So it's a favorite. Ah, it's not a raw file because I took it um, on my iPhone, which is not set for that. So I am going to say photo is a live photo because it probably is. Um, which is a photo generally has taken with your iPhone that has a few seconds of video uh, in the front and the end of it. So let's see if it is that. And I'm going to click on sun, favorite sunrises. Nope. So I'm going to go back to favorite sunrises, edit smart album again, and I'm going to pick a criteria that is going to meet. So I am going to make it, I'm going to, I'm going to take that criteria away. So now a photo is a favorite and the camera model is an iPhone uh, 12 Pro. Now I'm gonna click okay and let's see if that worked. Okay, so now it hit the right criteria for it to be uh, in the smart album. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's a way for you to be able to create specific albums based on, um, on criteria. So I'm gonna go back to library. Let's do a little editing. So I am going to pick this one. So I double clicked on it to get into an editing screen or to view it full size rather. If I want to do editing specifically, if I click on the edit button, all of a sudden we have tons of options. So I thought what we do is go through some of this and see how it affects a photo. Now we were talking about JPEG and RAW earlier. Notice how it does say up here, JPEG and RAW. If I right click using the mouse, I can tell it to use either the raw file, in this case, as the original that we'll be working on, or it can use the JPEG as the original. 
So it is the JPEG at the moment because it's giving me the option to choose raw. So I am going to go to use raw as original. So this is the version that should have the most information in it and should be the most editable. Now I'm going to go through some of the options we have along the top here. First one is being able to zoom in and out. So that can be super handy, right? If you're making fine, uh, if you want to make sure that you're, you're um, keeping say detail in there, or you, you're, you want to do some retouching and you want to make sure that you're being accurate. So you zoom in, so you're, um, you're working in a closer space. Filters, so built into um, photos are a bunch of filters. I'm going to go back to normal size and I'm going to hit each one and you can just see how it uh, affects it. So this is the original one. So here, and this, by the way, is a sunrise, uh, once again, in San Francisco, looking out towards the East Bay, not towards Oakland uh, area. So I'm going to click on Vivid now. Let's see what it does to it. Uh, now, here's a really handy thing I picked up uh, in one of the online courses I was looking at, is if you hold the M key down, it go toggles back and forth between the master original copy and the version where you're making edits now. So if I hold the M key down, this is the way the original file looks. And now it, it is showing it with the vivid filter applied. You can also go up here on the upper left and hold that down to do it. So you can either use the mouse to do it this way or the M key on your keyboard to toggle back and forth. To see how you're doing. So now I'm going to go to Vivid Warm. You can also adjust. Uh, I think this is fairly new. I think the older filters didn't have this option, but you can actually adjust. You can dial in uh, each filter's um, effectiveness. So I'm going to go all the way back to 100, and now I'm going to go back to 50%, and then maybe 25% just to see the effect. So it's just the M key on your keyboard. It's a simple thing. No, you don't have to hold down any kind of modifier key or anything. Just holding down the M key will toggle back and forth between the original, the master image, and the version you're working on currently. And it's the same thing over here um, on the upper left where you have these two screen images. And there I'm doing it again. And now I'm going to go to Vivid Cool. And basically, we're just going to spin through this, and you can, on your own, uh, go through all these um, settings yourself and see what you like and get a, a sense for what your taste is in doing this. Um, another very important part of this is Apple Photos is what they call non-destructive. They keep an original copy, effectively. They have all the original data of the file that you bring in. So you can always click to this one over here. See, I says revert to original. So if I click on that, it goes back to the original one. And you can also always export from Apple Photos um, the, uh, the original file if you like. So you can go to town and not really worry. You can always go back to the original. Sometimes you want to work from a copy because then you can see multiple versions next to each other and you don't have to revert to the original. You can keep working on the copy version. And since it's doing it all by kind of software uh, kind of trickery, it doesn't take up a lot of space. If you create a copy, it's not making a, another huge file. It's basically referencing the original one and making those changes and viewing it to you. So I hope that's kind of clear. Okay, Vivid Cool. And now I'm just going to use the arrow key on my uh, keyboard to go down. Oh, okay, that was not a good idea. I'm going to go back to... Uh, I thought that would work, but that actually moved me to another photo. So I am now going to click on done and go back here and go back to this one again. Here we go. So uh, I am now going to click on edit again to bring up all these choices. And I'm going to go back to filters and I'm going to quickly click, not use the, uh, the down arrow, which would bring me to another photo. Okay, dramatic warm. Actually, that looks kind of nice. And I'm going to dial it down a bit. Okay. Dramatic cool. Mono. So this now made it a black and white photo. Silvertone and noir, as in film noir, I guess. 
Um, something that'll come up often is cropping. So I'm gonna click over here on crop. Um, sometimes you'll have a photo say that you took it and it's at a, an odd angle, say it's like that. So when you're in the crop, you can grab this little triangle over here and you can start adjusting it and getting it to where it is to your liking. And I'm gonna basically bring it back to where it was. You can grab from the top and change. you can change all sorts of um, proportions on it. Now, by default, it uses freeform, which lets you create this uh, custom image the way you feel it should be. But that can get you in trouble if say you are gonna go and then make a, a print of it, like a five by seven or eight by 10, the proportions may not be right. Or you're gonna use it in like, um, an online um, news article or something, and that might not be the proportions that they want. So I'm gonna click over here and go back to original. And I'm gonna click square. Like say you needed, you know, you're doing a passport photo or something. This might be the proportions that you need. Or you're gonna print it. Like I said, you're gonna make a five by seven print. So this is the proportion you want. Now that means a lot of my photo is not in that. So if you were gonna do that, you would wanna make sure you have the, um, it laid out the way you would like it. Um, also, sometimes uh, an Im image comes in and it's upside down or uh, not the right way, so you can also flip it. So I'm going to click here. Oh, this way it's flipping it uh, kind of left to right, like mirror image. So I'm going to go and move that back. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor over here. This is the one for flipping it like horizontal to vertical and, and keep going around. So sometimes you'll need to do that with a, with a photo. So that's basically cropping. And I'm gonna do revert to original. And now I am going to go to, uh, I'm gonna click done. And I am going to click edit again. And I'm gonna click adjust. And now when you have it uh, on adjust, this is where there's like kind of the payload of lots and lots of um, controls. So one thing that they tend to get recommended is that you use the auto enhance um, button. So it makes the computer's best guess at how the image should look. So I'm gonna click on it and see what it did. So I am going to hit the M key again and go back. And I actually prefer the original in this case for myself. I think it made it too light, but there's a slider here. So I can adjust it. And I can also turn it off and it still holds that setting. So I could come back to it and say, oh yeah. And I could also click auto here for it to make its best guess. I'm gonna go to revert to original again. Now uh, I'm gonna go through these controls here, brilliance, exposure, et cetera. And we'll see what kind of effects it has on the image. So I'm gonna start to the right, increasing the brilliance. And now I'm gonna start going down the other side and see how much darker it's getting. Okay. Um, exposure, um, sometimes something just needs a little bit, uh, you know, a, a more um, brightened up a little bit or darkened a bit. Um, highlights, this can come in handy. So it's gonna affect like that area right there in the center primarily. And in this case, bringing down the highlights, I think works pretty well because it was a little blown out over here. So I'm gonna click revert to original again and we'll see that. So I'm gonna do highlights and bringing that down a bit. Shadows, we, I've used that a lot. Sometimes the photos were take, uh, taken kind of indoors. I just needs a little brightening up. Um, here we go. I'm going to go quickly through the sliders. And once again, once you see these are here, you can play around yourself and see what effects and dial it in the way you like. Like I said, they recommend often that you use the auto enhance tool first, and you can see it makes all these adjustments and you can see them here, and then you can dial it in yourself. So it gets you in the ballpark, but I'm going to click back to revert to original. I'm now going to go to the uh, color. Let's see what we got on this. 
slide it back and forth so I could remove all the color, effectively making it black and white. I'm going to turn that off and click avert to original, black and white. So I've done that a lot with photos. Some, some photos really look beautiful when they're transformed to black and white. This looks actually quite nice. So, but I'm going to turn that off. Retouch. I don't think we're going to have to retouch anything in this one. Maybe I'll see that on another photo. Um, there's a red eye um, thing here. If you take photos and you use flash, very often you'll see there's, you know, in the center of the pupil of the eye, there's um, a red eye. If you just click on that, it'll automatically find it and change it. And if, and if it doesn't do that, then you can click on the brush over here and go and just uh, brush it in yourself. The curve's kind of tricky. You can adjust the overall character of the photo through this. I'm going to turn that off again. Same. And then with the, um, this one with the levels, you can um, change the kind of the ratio of like light to dark is the best way I understand it. But just a subtle thing like this can improve the photo. And this one, this is interesting, the selective color, you can actually use a dropper and sample something and then make the changes to that. So I tried to sample this part of the sunrise and now I'm gonna click on saturation and it should increase it there. So let's see if that worked. And I'm gonna hit the M and see if that made it out the difference. Yeah. So I'm gonna go revert to original and I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna use the dropper do that. And now I'm going to go to saturation. So I think I want to bring it down a little bit. Let's see. And I'm going to check back with the original. And it looks actually very similar. There's, huh. there's a small difference. Very small difference, huh? Yeah. So click I'm gonna put there. And now I'm going to go luminescence again. Yeah, in this case, well, yeah, it's subtle, but actually it gets blown out a bit. So I think bringing it down, let's see, now I'm gonna go hit the M key again. Yeah, it's subtle, but there is uh, there's a little more detail. Uh, and then if I want to zoom in a bit, we can see. Let's see, I'm gonna, so I basically use the slider to zoom in and then I grabbed it to move it up. And now we're gonna, it might be zoom in even a little bit more. And let's see what the difference is. Okay, it's small, but makes a difference. Okay, and I'm gonna go revert to original again and bring it back down. Okay, I'm gonna click done for this. So this is general editing of a photo. And like I said, you can spend time on your own now that you know where the things are, playing around with that. Um, I'm also gonna give you information on some of the tutorials you can do online. I'm gonna click done, which is gonna take me back out and I'm in the library. And now as I, I can use the arrow keys now to go back and forth between these photos. Now, another thing that can be really handy in organizing is making something a favorite. So say you're someone you've got you know, hundreds and hundreds of photos, but hopefully there's not, well, if, oh, well, I guess hopefully they're all great photos that you wanna make favorites, but you probably wanna have narrow some down saying, oh, these are the key photos that I might want to print or I wanna work on. And an easy way to do that is as you're moving through them and kind of scanning them and doing kind of what they call like triage, you can, um, like so I'm using the arrow key to move to, and I'm to the pizza shot. If you hit the period, it'll make it a favorite. So do you see down here in the bottom left, there's a little heart. So you can either click on that and you can turn, make it a favorite. You can um, defavor it or make it a favorite. And you can also do that with the period. That's all this, the, the period key, just like the M key, the period key. Uh, and that could be really great if you're moving through lots of photos. So but I'm going to make this a favorite. I'm going to make this a favorite. They're all favorites. I love them all. Well, there's another trick. I'm going to go back into a, uh, photo. I'm going to go into this one, uh, the tugboat with a rainbow. Um, I'm going to go to edit and let's see if this works. I'm on brilliance. So it goes to there to one point. If I hold the option key, yep. If I hold the option key down, it actually gives you more choices and you go beyond. It's like a spinal tap and going to 11, but for real. So 
Um, so if you're using the sliders and, and you're just not getting enough of an effect, you can hold down, once again, the option key, and then you'll have an increased range above and under. So and now I'm going to click revert to original and done. That's one worth uh, also making a note of. Okay, I'm going to show. I'm going to. Go, I'm going to go back to this photo again, and I'm going to make some adjustments. I'm going to click edit again. Um, this is something another thing that I uh, came across that seems handy. Like say I'm going to just make some changes to this and decide that this is the way I like it. That this is a great um, adjustment for this. And I have several other photos that are similar, and I would like to have the same adjustments, but I want to have to do it painstakingly each time. You can right click. So once again, you know, using uh, the right, I'm using a mouse, so I'm using the right click button. And one of your options is copy adjustments. So now I'm going to click done. I'm going to go back to the library and I'm going to apply it to this one. So I'm going to uh, go into edit and I'm going to paste adjustments. So it didn't make much of a change, as I can tell, I'm gonna hit the M key, but it made some change. So it's something that can be handy, but you obviously wouldn't you know, use it on lots of different types of photos that you wouldn't want the same adjustments for. So I'm going to now go back to revert to original, click done and go back. I think I wanna make sure this one goes revert to original also. So you can also do it from here. I'm right clicking and I'm gonna do revert to original right there. Question that came up um, in the previous class was, um, can you do selective editing like you can like in Photoshop or something like that? And you can't really work on this, separate and have different areas within photos. There's a lot of adjustments in here, but not that. You can make some adjustments to the tonal values in different um, sections using um, the, these um, ones like the, uh, the curves and uh, and levels, I think you can, you can have a little, it can be a little selective in some of the areas, but overall you can't just pick an area and work only on that. Uh, that's just one feature it doesn't have. Um, but there are programs, and this is worth noting, that do have those features and you can actually get plugins, but you'd have to pay money for them, that will increase the abilities of photos, but you still be working within photos and be able to use its organizational tools and still be able to do, um, say, uh, use uh, iCloud to do backups. So there is a lot of benefit to keeping things within photos uh, if you like working in this world. Work to original and done and let me find where we can get to that oh there's another thing i didn't mention there is an information area um and you can have that and keep that on and keep it up over here and then you'll know all this detailed information about the photo you know the exposure the f-stop what camera was used etc um the other thing which i uh neglected to mention is using the help menu so here, so say I'm going to go to help, search. I'm going to actually go to photos help. And this guide is actually pretty impressive. They have a, they have a lot of information in here. And you can open up in your browser and you can search for lots of detail. Now, I was going to show something else um, in the preview app that might be interesting. So I'm going to close photos for a minute. Uh, window, um, quit photos. And I'm going to go to the pizza um, photo again. And I'm going to open it up. When, generally, when you're on your Mac and you double click on an image, it'll open up preview. And so here's something. I'm going to make this a little smaller so I can move it. Excuse me. So I can move it over here. If you click on the icon over here for markup, I think it is, right? Um, and you get a new choice over here on the left, one of which is Smart Lasso. So I am now going to trace along the edges of this, and I'm going to be able to copy it and make an, uh, an, out, an outline of it. So here, I'm going to start over here. And the idea is that you do your best to 
keep along the edges. Now, one thing about this is it does an okay job. It's not perfect. Some of the other programs, like if you're using Photoshop or the plugins from some of the other apps, because I saw a demonstration of that where they get it perfect. But notice I'm just basically going along, trying to get all the edges of the pizza. And I'm in smart lasso, not regular lasso. So I know I missed a little edge there. So here we go. And this can come in handy and can be fun. So here we go. So I completed it. Now, you can see I didn't get it quite perfect, but you know, close. I'm going to go to edit and copy. So now it's in the, the clipboard, the memory of the computer. I'm gonna go file new from clipboard. And now I have an image of it just isolated. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna save that and go pizza. And I'm gonna save it on the desktop. But once you have that, like say, I don't know. So let's see, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go to the Christmas tree. I should be able to edit and paste it in there and also be able to grab it. I'm grabbing it by the corner so that when I uh, reduce the size, it stays in proportion. So I don't know, you might come up with some hijinks where you're gonna copy someone's head or you know get a drink or something and, and put it somewhere in a photo. But that is one way that you could use the free preview app on your um, Mac to do such a thing. So um, the other example would be, I'm gonna open up the Bernie with mittens folder. So everybody I imagine remembers that when that was, you know, a meme and all over the place, but basically that is, you know, they just did a, a better version of that. So I'm gonna go do that with Bernie now from this photo I got from the web. So I am going to, I'm gonna make him a little smaller so I can get it all on the screen well enough for myself. Uh, here we go, okay. And I, <clears throat> clicking on this icon over here, which brought up this icon over here. And I'm gonna go to Smart Lasso. And I tried it earlier and it missed the hair up here, but we'll see, I'm gonna try it. It's basically, I think, looking for things that are sharp delineations in color and texture. So, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little fast so I don't bore you. And we'll get most of the chair. We don't need to get all of it. I'm gonna go sweep right around there. Okay, so once again, this isn't gonna be perfect, but this is just an example of how you could do your own Bernie uh, one. So I'm gonna go edit, copy, and now I'm going to see this, I'm gonna get rid of that one. Watch, I'll move it over here and see if Bernie is gonna go and visit us here at, at Civic Center uh, so anyway, so a little, a little fun, a little hijinks. Um, but you, uh, and also if you didn't know, you can use uh, the preview app to create your own signature that you can use for like when you're doing online PDF documents and the like. Another thing you can do easily in preview, uh, and you can also do it in, um, in photos is you can add text to something and that comes up handy sometimes. So I'm gonna to go to tools, uh, annotate, and I'm gonna to go to text. And it's hard to see, but it put a text box right here. And I'm gonna go Bernie in mittens. And I'm going to put the cursor back over it and hope that I can get it to where it turns into a hand. And then I can move it around. And in this case, black text on white works. If you double click, you should be able to see, um, um, you can, oh, if I go over here, I can also make different choices in, in font and color and size of the font. Um, so that also can come in handy. Sometimes you may need to uh, annotate a photo or if you're a photographer, you may wanna put you know, photo by in the bottom or, um, or if you wanna, once again, create your own meme. 
So you, you've, you have something funny to say to go along with an image. This is how you could do it. And then you'd go you know, file and save, and then it would be in uh, part of that image. And I'm gonna go back to photos and also show how you can add text there since that might come up for you. So edit and over here where the three dots are, one of them is markup. And then there's some new choices in here, uh, one of which is text. Uh, I'm gonna try it on a different image just to see if it, there's something about this one. Uh, I'm gonna click done and go over here. I guess we'll go to, to pizza. And I'm going to go to um, edit the three dots. So go to this box over here with the A. That creates a text box. And then you can go tasty pizza. And then I think if I want to change it, that's where I'll find the adjustments. So now I can make it, you know, I don't know, green and uh, larger. So. Okay, so if for any reason you want to be able to put um, text boxes in your photos while in photos, um, this is how you could do it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to close that. Photos quit. So here is a, uh, an example of a free class that you can take online um, through San Francisco Public Library on LinkedIn Learning. It used to be called lynda.com, but now it's LinkedIn Learning. Um, you can just go to our website, you go in with your library card and PIN, and you can immediately start searching for and taking classes on a lot of different subjects. So I found this one. Uh, if I click on it, it should open up the actual class. Here we go. So here's just a, a little sample of someone who's a true expert in this subject with so much detail. So if you're really interested in learning to get the most out of photos, um, I would suggest taking this class and also you can do a lot of other searching on YouTube, whatever, but here, I'm just gonna play a few seconds so you get a sense of what it's like. In order to make the most effective adjustments to your images, it's a good idea to have a proper working environment. Now, we're on a set today with lots of- okay. And notice there's lots of different subjects. As you choose to work with images, there's really a big, highlights as well as contrast see you see that and one of the benefits of this is you can just um you take your time you move at your own pace you can pause you can rewind so i think this would be an excellent follow-up to our class today this one is from udemy uh so udemy is a, another free service from the library tons of great free um video classes or classes taught virtually by video didn't find a lot on for the mac photos app when you search for Mac photos, you get all sorts of things, including like Photoshop and other things. But I noticed that in this one, they had this subsection on what is Mac photos and in a, in a whole editing section. So it's a larger lecture, 24 hours, but they have um, a section on using Mac photos. So that's Udemy, also free, San Francisco Public Library. Um, you do need to have a, I think, a, a, G, uh, a Gmail or a Microsoft uh, account that Udemy needs that for it to work. You don't need that for uh, LinkedIn. And then also here is just uh, a screenshot of having done a search in YouTube for different courses on that. And there's a lot of great information there all, um, by different people. This guy, Joel Feld, seemed to do uh, quite a good job, very understandable. Well, thank you, everybody. I, I hope it was helpful. It was interesting for me.